In the previous video, we have discussed the async and awake operators. I have deleted the old code from our world script. Let's go to our world script and let's open it up. Great. Now I have returned the code to the previous form. So from our generate world, we are simply calling the generate world vector3 int position. Let's do some work on this code uh, now. And first thing that I want to mention that I didn't mention in the previous video is that task uh, await and async is not all there is to the asynchronous operations. Of course, there is an issue of accessing the data and returning the data. And of course, uh, you cannot really access any of those dictionaries that we have from the outside tasks of the main thread because this will break the whole thing and it will blow up. No, but actually it is very dangerous and most of the time it doesn't work. So we need to take special care when it comes to data structures that are used in the asynchronous operations and that are passed between threads. So uh, let's start from the easiest example. In our generate world, first of uh, all, we need to refactor this so it will be represented as an asynchronous method. So what we can do is we can call in the generate world uh, the method that is called by our uh, button async. So we want this to be async, so this method will await the generate world operation that takes in the vector3 in position. Now this is uh, angry because we are not calling as async in the definition of the generate world method, so we are going to call async and we are going to return a sim uh, simple task. And this is the best practice to return a task in case you want to access it, in case you want to stop it, we need to have the access to the task. Right click on this quick actions and using system.threading.task class. So the simplest way with that we can implement a asynchronous operation into our generate world method is by taking the first line, this, and by awaiting this line. So what we can do is we can await. And we can call task.run and we can pass the lambda expression so parenthesis equals greater sign and basically we are creating an anonymous method that will take in the uh, uh, nothing actually and that will return our get position that player sees and as you can see we do not have to pass the we, we do not have to define to the task that we are returning this world generation data it is smart enough to get this and we are going to simply return this from our task instead of calculating it on the main thread. Now, honestly, this isn't very expensive operation, so it will not do anything to our code in terms of increasing the performance, but this is how we would apply the task.run operation. So let's save it. Let's go back to Unity. Okay, and we can press play, and we will be able to click regenerate. And this should work exactly the same as it did, but now we have performed one operation on a separate thread and awaited it to finish its work before we were able to play our game. Okay, so let's go back to our code. Great. Now next two operations, those four each loops, are dealing with the data on the main thread, on the removing chunks and removing chunk data. So chunks are rendered uh, on our main thread and the chunk data is stored on our main thread. So while we could put this operation on a separate thread, it will not be very expensive and it will be uh, difficult because we cannot really access the, in this removed chunk data, the world data, the chunk data dictionary, we would have to create a separate dictionary on a separate thread, then pass this new dic dictionary, a, a copy of this chunk data dictionary back to our main thread to keep it safe, or we would have to make it into not a, a dictionary, but public, concurrent dictionary and we can alt enter or right click and we can see that we can use concurrent dictionaries using system.collections.concurrent and then we would have we would be able to access it from a separate thread but again we do not have to do it so let's leave those two for each loops alone now next loop is more interesting because it is generating our data for the uh, for the generation process so the more chunks do we have, the slower it will get the generation of a chunk data. So basically what we want to do is we want to output those two lines on a separate thread and do this on a separate thread. And when it returns the data, we want to add it all to our chunk data dictionary on the main thread. Since adding operation is very cheap compared to the calculations that we perform when we are generating the chunk data. 
So here, instead of for each loop, like taking care of those data and new data, we're going to create a new method. And this will be a concurrent dictionary. So this is the thread safe collection. And we want to use this because in case we want to await in this calculate world the data class, we want to split our calculation between multiple threads, we can still use our concurrent dictionary. And on those multiple threads, we can access it from those multiple threads and return it back to our main thread. So let's right click on this concurrent dictionary, quick action, and using system.collections.concurrent. It will take vector3 int and the chunk data as it was returned here, the chunk data, and we are assigning it to the position. Data dictionary equals, and we are going to await, calculate the world chunk data method, and we are going to pass our world generation data chunk data positions to create what we have passed in this for each loop. Right click on this method, quick actions, and generate this method. Okay. And we can cut out those two chunk data and new data. And actually what we want to do is we want to substitute this for each loop to loop for each dictionary. And this will be now our data. So this so let's call it uh, calculate data. And we're going to pass this calculate data to our world data dot chunk data dictionary add calculated uh, data dot key and calculated data dot value okay so now those two methods that we had here we will cut those out and let's go to our calculate world chunk data right click on this newly created method and go to the definition okay so here in this method i'm going to paste what we had before so we are going to need a position and we have received it from our chunk data position to create. Now let's leave those two lines so that we can use those. What we are going to do is we are going to create a concurrent dictionary. The type we have uh, here, we, it was passed automatically. So we are going to create this dictionary equals new and let's use the autocomplete to create this dictionary. So what we are going to do is return task dot run and we are going to pass uh, the parentheses and next of course we need to create an anonymous method so empty parentheses lambda expression and the body of the function okay so this will be our action delegate and inside of this we will need to return our dictionary so what we are going to do is we are going to loop for each and we are going to use tap tap to create this from the snippet and we are looking for each chunk data position to create from our list that was passed as the parameter. So we are looping from uh, this collection. And after we do this, we are going to return our dictionary. Okay. So this is great, but we are looping through this. Uh, I have misspelled it. Yeah. Okay. So now this is all great. All we need to do is fill in this dictionary. So let's change the for each loop to be returning i think this is the vector 3 int type just so that everybody knows vector 3 int position and we are going to simply perform those two calculations chunk data equals new chunk data chunk size chunk height since we are still in the world uh, script so we have access to those and we are going to pass this as the world reference and the position new data terrain generator generate chunk data m data and map offset and as you might recall this is go to the definition this is this method that generates our chunk data and since it doesn't write or read from any collection it just processes those data that was put to it we can safely call it from our thread in case this would modify a collection of some sort on the main thread this would cause an issue so basically the best approach is to create uh, to use functional programming to create methods that only take in the parameters and return the data okay let's go back so we only need to do is add to our dictionary and here we have only try add since this is a concurrent dictionary since we could add to this dictionary from multiple threads we can add to it and we are going to pass the position and we are going to pass the new uh, data i think yeah okay so basically we need to return a task uh, that returns a concurrent dictionary. So this is what we are doing here, returning task.run and we are returning the dictionary. And all we need to do is pass the 
the method that we want to perform on a separate thread uh, operation. Okay, let's save it. Now, if we go back to our start method, as you can see, we are, uh, after we finish adding to this chunk a concurrent dictionary the data, uh, on the separate thread, we are going to look for each on this main thread and add this data to the world data dot chunk data dictionary and the rest of the methods for now will remain the same so let's save it let's go back to unity okay let's press play and let's press our regenerate method and we are going to see that it now works and we have generated our world so one thing that we haven't talked about is how do we stop our unity from executing this uh, method from our separate thread since uh, this runs this code now the calculate world chunk data runs on a separate thread so if we stop playing our unity game it will never access this task and it will never stop the code performed on a separate thread so we're going to talk about how to stop the separate thread functionality later on or we can watch my video that i have suggested in the previous video uh, about the async and awake in unity there is uh, the method how you would make unity stop the work done on the separate threads that we create by on our own okay so last thing uh, that remains is to refactor this code or actually this code to create the mesh data on a separate thread as well and what i would suggest is give it a shot try doing this on your own using the example from the previous uh, this concurrent dictionary try using the same method but to generate this code this mesh data dictionary just swapping it for the concurrent dictionary and doing this all work on the separate thread because as you might recall we have already split the data generation so world generation data the chunk data and the mesh data from the rendering process so there is nothing easier than just to put this all code on a separate thread and invoke it there. So give it a shot, try creating this code, and in the next video I will show you how to do it. Okay, be sure to like the video if you enjoyed this tutorial, subscribe to my channel, also support me as a patron, and I really appreciate all the patrons that are currently supporting me, and of course you can check out my video courses, uh, they are about making 2D games, and I hope you can learn a lot from those. Okay. See you in the next video.